you mentioned sacred sons when you go to a group like that because as i understand it that's a, a men's retreat group or a men's circle what is it that you're able to do there that you're not able to do in the regular world right beautiful question it's not so much about ability as it is focus when you go to that event, the focus is authentic connection to your own heart and to other men. Uh, when you are out in the world, the, the real world, as it were, that isn't everybody's primary focus. And so what I've tried to do and what my goal has been since that very first event is I'm now in my community trying to create a life you don't need to retreat from a life that you can do that here and now. And so that's creating, you know, men's circles here locally, creating a culture here locally that's taking those things that I've learned at Sacred Sons and introducing them. Um, but yeah, outside of that, is there a special energy that comes with that? Absolutely. Because men are showing up in that intentional space of, I need this, I want this, I'm ready for this. And the discomfort of change is now finally less than the discomfort of staying the same. And they're ready to, to, to make that switch. But I, I think that's an excellent question because there's actually a danger in that. I love Sacred Sons. I participate in multiple events a year. And I think if you ask Sacred Sons what they're going to look like in 10 years, it won't be what they're doing now. Because as this grows at an exponential rate, the retreat space is no longer about um, that because that's everywhere. Now it's about what are best practices. Now it's about leadership. Now it's about exploration and growth together uh, rather than introduction. Moving from a retreat to an advance, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. So that was actually a question that I was going to ask is what that sort of practice looks like in the real world, so to speak, or in an intentional community, because I think that's something a lot of people want. I, I know I've gone to uh, retreats or to uh, conferences or, or things where there's a group of people getting together with a very intentional purpose or shared vision or mission. And very often what happens is there's a container and there's a great experience and then everybody leaves and that's it. Like it's over. You don't see them again. And so I'm wondering what that looks like in an ongoing practice of some kind or, or, or how that would be created in, in the first place. Right. Great, great question. And that's, that's continued to be an evolution for me, but two, two examples that I'll give. The first is, uh, anybody that's ever been through any kind of rehabilitation, uh, from an addiction, right? Rehabilitation centers can be amazing. And the majority of the time, people will return to their addiction. Did the, the rehabilitation center not teach something that they should have? Were they not given the right skills and ability? Of course they were. But they have to return to their family, and they have to return to the people that don't also share those skills, that also don't share those, those mindsets and those practices that are happening. So what that looks like, first and foremost, is there are other people there doing the same thing day to day. Even if you're not doing it together, you're just all doing it. So the analogy that I'll give here is a gym, right? Uh, physical health, a hundred years ago, gyms would have been unthinkable, right? Like, why would we need a gym? We just go and work. But then as society evolved and changed, and we did more desk jobs and some of this stuff, life got more comfortable we found it necessary to create a space to go simulate some of the things we used to have to do. And that's very much what men's work is right now, is as we have moved away from each other as men and become more isolated and not talk to each other, not connecting, not knowing how to be vulnerable with each other, we're creating regular places that you can go and get a workout in your masculine health. Uh, so you can go to a circle that's happening once a week somewhere and just have an opportunity to get together with men 
and talk and get together and talk about real life and get together to meditate or drop in for a few minutes and say, I wonder how I am feeling. What is present for me? Because I haven't thought about that in 35 years. I should probably take a second and consider that. Um, having those spaces, having those times to get together and do things with other men outside of work, which, you know, the, the majority of the places that men connect with other men is like work, sometimes sports or like a bar, right? All pretty superficial and not going to help you connect further into your own heart. So if that answers your question, that's part of what I'm trying to do is I'm creating different uh, modalities for men to join together and get a good workout for their masculine health. And so, that's, so that's using this, like. using this gym analogy, what is the muscle that you're working out in a group like this? Oh, damn. That's a good question. <laughs> Your heart. Just plain and simple. In the world that we live in, you look at any movie, men are generally allowed to show about three emotions. We're allowed to show anger. We're allowed to show pride. And to a certain level, we're able to show some happiness. But even guys that are too happy, everybody like, what's up with that guy? <laughs> like that there's something off with somebody if they're just, if they're too happy. So being able to open your heart and, and let the walls down around it and let it heal and let it shine out is is what we're working and we find lots of fun ways to do that um that wouldn't necessarily you wouldn't necessarily think is your heart um most people wouldn't think that getting punched in your face is going to help you connect into your heart but it does for example um that's that's one of the things that we do is we'll have some uh we call it conscious combat as one of our modalities so hold on, what does conscious combat involve? You got to break that one down. I'm curious now. So Fight Club had it like 60% right, 50 to 60% right. Um, the whole blowing up buildings, like creating a new, <laughs> that, that part I'm not in favor of, but. Um, oh, I'm out now. Was, you had me go in there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Most men, their association with aggression is repression as young boys, you know, stop fighting, stop roughhousing, stop doing that. You're going to make your sister cry. You're going to make your brother cry. You're going to hurt yourself. Right. And then if you did experience it, it was generally in the form of some kind of abuse. And then it's the same thing. Don't talk to anybody about this. You're fine. You're blowing this out of proportion or whatever it is. Aggression is a very natural masculine trait and characteristic and and one that's honestly necessary to our not only our survival but our thriving in society and so when you create a space that is safe for men to get in together put on some gloves to look, look each other in the eyes and see this man as your brother and meet him in that space and say this is my intention and you get to tell your story and he gets to hear your story. He gets to hear what's going to be hardest for you. He's going to hear what you want to experience. And then you step into that space and you meet your brother there and you box and you get punched in the face. And if you grew up getting punched in the face, there are some demons to face there, right? If you grew up being told that you were going to hurt somebody, if you expressed any kind of roughhousing or play, uh, something's going to come up there. And so more often than you would believe, after a two-minute round, you're tired, but you're crying too. You're crying because you finally got to this place to where you could release the shame, the guilt, the conditioning, the resentment, whatever it might be around that. And in that you find liberation.